that science is like swimming in an ocean. It's swimming in an ocean at night. So it's uh, dangerous, but at the same time, it's extremely enjoyable. For someone who has uh, been swimming in Greece at night, uh, uh, this is probably one of the best experiences you can have. The least thing that you can uh, imagine is that you might drown one day or that there might be sharks around, <laughs> but uh, it is what it is. And uh, we have to live in being able to swim in that ocean. Um, the biggest mistakes, I'm sure, are mine. <laughs> so I, I, I think that science is about mistakes. It's uh, about making mistakes, but trying to realize them and compare them with what might be better evidence and hopefully correct them as quickly as possible. I think my biggest mistake is that I underestimated how much power politics and media and powers outside of science could have on science. Probably many measures cause more harm than, than benefit. Uh, and I, I think that we need to look very carefully at what we did and what a kind of an impact uh, each one of the measures had. It was just a few experts or a few politicians or a few policy people or a few completely ignorant people actually who were very powerful in social media who said, we need to do this. And, and then there was a domino effect and people did this. And now we are just scratching our heads to, to say, who said that? <laughs> because really that was not in our textbooks, that was not in our studies that had been done or are being done, that was not what science uh, was telling us. It, it was what panic and fear and uh, the best will, you know, good intentions to, to save the world <laughs> in a sense was dictating at a time that there was very little room for evidence-based approaches and for common sense, let alone for science. It, it, it was all, uh, if you don't do that, uh, then you are a, a bad person. You want to kill people and uh, you, you, you're horrible. And I, I think that we did a lot of damage that will be very difficult even to appraise its depth. If you want to have the majority of the population have some immunity, to that virus, uh, not perfect immunity, but some immunity, either because they were infected or because they were vaccinated. I think in most places around the world, by the end of 2021, uh, we had reached that point. I, I think we, we should make sure that our children are back to living normal lives. I think that there's absolutely no indication, at least now that we're talking, that uh, there should be any restrictions on what they do, on how they're educated, on, on how they go about uh, living their lives, enjoying their lives, learning, experiencing, socializing, uh, doing whatever matters and, and whatever they can do. For, for children, the, the risks of suffering something serious were enormously uh, minimal. <laughs> and at the same time, everything that we did, or almost everything, was really creating problems to children. It was creating problems to their education, it was creating problems to their socializing, it was creating problems to their mental health, to their psychology, to, to their uh, ability to, to grow in a world that made sense. I, I think that the world very often does not make sense to adults, and we, we see that, and I think a lot of people got even more depressed and very anxious during the pandemic. But for children, it was really the apocalypse in a sense because they had far less experience and suddenly they, they saw a world that was completely unnormal and completely weird in their eyes. So I, I think that it's very difficult to measure some of these consequences and some of these repercussions, but I, I'm really sorry that much of what we did, closing down schools, keeping, uh, children without being able to socialize, without being able to, to function, uh, really created major problems that we will see the repercussions downstream, unfortunately. Yeah.